Welcome to the Thursday edition of the Don Cherry's Grapevine Podcast. So again, if you like it, make sure you subscribe or follow us. So Dad, you know, you everybody kind of knows you had two goalies in Boston. You had Jerry Cheevers and Jill Gilbert, but your first year, your backup goalie was Ross Brooks. You know, I have a story. I knew we were going to talk about this, and I asked you to talk about him. Uh, is Ross Brooks, it, it was unbelievable. You know, I started to look at his record. It was unbelievable. Uh, now, he, when he was trying to make the National Hockey League, there were six teams, six teams, six goalies were all Hall of Famers. And there's no way you're breaking in then. So he went down and he played in the American Hockey League. And he was in the American Hockey League and he was back up there and he did pretty good. And in 1971, he was out of hockey. He had, couldn't get a job anywhere. And he rode every team in the National Hockey League and the only one that answered him was Milt Schmidt of the Boston Bruins. So Milt brought him back, and then he put him down in uh, Providence to play in Providence. And he was playing professional hockey player, doing well down there. And then Jerry Cheevers jumped to the uh, Jerry Cheevers jumped to the WHA. I think he went to Cleveland, and he jumped away. So now he brought up, and Jilly was the number one. Jilly Gilbert was the number one goaltender in Boston. And, and Ross was the, was the backup. And happy, happy as a lark. And then Jilly Gilbert got hurt, and Ross stepped in and won 14 straight games. 14 straight games. And, I mean, that is unbelievable. That's how good the goaltenders were back then. So then the next year, he's unemployed again. But I have to tell you, his record, which is unbelievable, that – Nobody ever mentions this. And I, I have to admit, I should have known more than anything. When he played, when he retired, this is his record as a goaltender. 37 wins, 7 losses, and 6 ties. That means in 54 games, he only lost 7 games. He only lost 7 times. And can you imagine? Well, why, you wonder why somebody wouldn't pick I him up. I have no idea. I, I did not know this. Uh, but I remember he was, he was the first Jewish goaltender, I think, that ever played, and he was playing great. He was quite proud that he was Jewish, and he he was all in the Jewish league and that around there. But can you imagine? 37 wins, 7 losses, and 6 ties. Unbelievable. Ross Brooks, and here I had him in the organization. I should have brought him to Colorado when I had Hardy Astrum. You know, I remember we were talking about Ross Brooks, and I remember uh, when you were with me in Boston, you remember, I rem- you remember his wife or something. You- well, I remember, now you can imagine, Mom and I, it's our first Boston Bruin game, and we're going in, and, you know, we're, we've been... You're like, like me, you're a you're punk. Minor, minor leaguers, we're going into yeah, all these it. hot NHL wives well, and everything. Let's, let's, let's put it in perspective. In Rochester, you used to make the sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, like... And you remember in the sandwiches, you made them too damp? Oh, I remember. Well, we were on a very limited budget in Rochester. We were Rochester GM, Americans, yeah. and uh, I was part of the caterer for the press. And I made remember those beautiful finger oh, sandwiches with a deviled ham and egg salad, and and then I'd put tea towels over them to keep them moist. And then I'll never forget there was one reporter, yeah, and he complained though. that they were the tea towels were too damp and that the finger sandwiches were soggy well you were so upset that you banned him from the dressing room and no one was to talk to him anymore for the for no, his... i didn't ban him from the dressing room i just said nobody talked to him anymore well that's just as bad anyhow that's how what punker we are you I used know. to used to make the sandwiches and there and... we are in our cl- so i remember we're going into our my mom and i of course we were like but what do we wear in our cloth coats so we did walk in and we walked in and we ran into mrs Sinden and uh, mrs brooks and they said, come on, Rose, you know, you can we sit in our, and our mom goes, well, well, where are you? Why aren't we going to the wives room? And she goes, oh, Rose, you don't want to go in there. You sit with us. Mom goes, no, no, no. I well, don't. let me explain why, how, how your mother got used to sitting in the, with the rest of the wives is that I made a, I was, I made a, I was a player. So she went into the players, you know, with the wives. And then I, when I was in Rochester, I, I halfway through the, I must talk about that sometime, I got made coach. So she just 
you know, she just stayed. There was the no room. distinction in those days yeah. between you, the wife being the coach and, and oh, all the, the yes, there was Cindy. Well, yes, on other teams, oh. the wives never. It was the the big thing was that it, Rose stayed in the dressing room with the wives because that's where she was. I was a player at the time, and I got made coach, and it was no difference. She just stayed in the wife. So that's right. That's how. And you people never knew the difference. And when you went to Boston, you thought, well, I'll just go with yeah, the wives. Yeah, there wasn't like that Rochester. distinction between the players' wives and the coaches' wives. So we went into the den. I think they thought we went in. And it was really interesting. First thing I remember is that we had our cloth coats on. And it was like the rack of fur coats was yeah, unbelievable. You know, you know, it's funny. I jump in. I say this and keep your train of thought is that when I first said to Rose, when I was going to coach the Boston Bruins, she says, oh, what will I wear? <laughs> what that's, do you wear? That's exactly <laughs> it. Well, that's what you think of. And I remember the big coat. This was what? This was the 70s. The big coat then was a lynx coat. Lynx oh, coats were geez. big. Now, you can imagine, probably one of the worst coats you could get was a lynx coat. Well, beautiful. Though. Lynx coat. And I remember Gilly Gill Bear's wife, before she put it on, she she was she had it on and she had black pants on and all she did was complain about how a lynx coat shed so she was taking all this hair off and I'm going he's who knew mink doesn't shed lynx does the things you learn in the wives room who knew fox mink the whole deal so you have sandwiches in that in there the, well the the, in, the the interesting thing is it was two two tiers there was an upstairs and a downstairs so we, of course we walked in and we go gee this is the big NHL. Where's all the food? <laughs> of course, you know, mom and I are very food orientated. Oh, yeah. and the wives downstairs, which we soon learned was girlfriends and maybe the third and fourth line, said, well, the food and the drinks are That's upstairs. where you guys sat. That's where we sat. We so go, there was a different hierarchy. Oh, uh, my dear. There was a pecking. Learning something new here. Oh, it was we. Mom and I were taking it all in, the dynamics of what, what was going on. And mom says, well... All the food's upstairs. Why don't you? No, no, we don't. We don't go upstairs. So you, we just sit. We just sat there, and all. So eventually, we did go up, and Mom brought some of the food down. And but we could see it was the same wives bringing the food. So Mom decided that they were. We were all going to take turns and bringing the food in the hors d'oeuvres. So don't think I know. I don't know if many women are listening to this podcast, but there's a big thing on who could outdo each other with the. Hors d'oeuvres. And if you, someone said, oh, Rose, this is a wonderful dip. Uh, can I have the recipe? That was it. You, if you got asked for the recipe. So I could go on and on about the wives room. Um, I think. Don't Ma- go on too, Mar. No, 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 no. I think no. We, well, I could I think, tell you stories, but. I think the interesting thing, well, though, would you, would you say, because I remember going in there occasionally oh. and you could tell there was tension. Oh, there, there was, was oh, always right, eh? tension. Oh, yeah. I'm learning all this, but I didn't yeah, know you that. Could, you could tell. But and it there there was the hierarchy. Oh, you there know was it. The cert, we won't you know say who, but there were certain people that were upstairs, and they there was the food. And then the second year in the second year, uh, Betty Cheever, Jerry came. Oh, and Betty Cheevers came, and Betty and Mom were good friends because you guys played in Rochester. Rochester played right. So we could you know they had parties at each other's house, so they were like old friends. Right. And. Mom and Betty straightened that out pretty well, quick. Well, uh, the thing is, yes, you have to realize because normally a player coming in or a player or a goalie's the 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 you are, you know, you got to know your place. If you just got traded to the team, you don't have a big yap in the dressing room. Sort of like the sort a of rookie. like the dressing room, right, Dad? I mean, I don't know. I you know. I, my first year was like you could have had Mickey Mouse behind the bench. Well, but. this is it. You have to know your position. But what yeah. happened was when Betty Cheevers came back, she was from the old school. She had already won Stanley Cups yeah. with the Bruins. So she was the queen bee coming back. Now, normally she would have gone upstairs. But because her and mom were good friends oh. in Rochester, yeah. she hung up downstairs. So can I? No, I don't know if you might edit this out or not. But no, this no, is, don't tell, don't, don't tell no, one. Don't don't name, don't name names. No, okay, don't. But I, but uh, okay, so it'll be. I won't name names, but not hard to figure out. But anyway, so we're sitting there, and there was two wives down below, and they were parlay vooing in front of us. And every once in a while, speaking French. Yeah, parlay vooing, okay? And every once in a while, you hear cherry, and then you would hear smatsi. So you knew they were talking about the team and us, and we had no idea. So Betty Cheevers looks at them and says, hey, you two over there, we don't speak French. 
He says, you speak English when you're in this room. Well, mom and I just about died. I mean, we were like, so we go, oh, that's And did they good. speak English? Of course they did. Yeah, uh-huh. So once again, on the ride home with you, we get in more trouble talking to you than the ride home. And we told you what happened. And do you remember what you said to, to us, to no, mom and I? No, I don't remember. You said, let me get this straight. You two stupos let them speak French in the wives' room when I don't let them speak French in the dressing room? Uh, well, uh, yeah. He goes, what is wrong with you people? Well, I, I think don't... you said we, you people again. And uh, so mom and I said, we learned then we really have to edit what we tell you what goes on in the you dressing didn't. room. You didn't. You told me about Hank Noy. No. Oh, well, I know. Well, we did. We thought we learned, but Can we Did I tell stumbled. that story about Hank Noy? No, that, that's... We think we told that already. Where oh, yeah. yeah. The optional practices. But I, I remember, too, like, I remember that it was, uh, like, the food was upstairs. Right. And th- th- you didn't bring it down, and and Mom and Betty changed that all up. Yeah, like, we would then have some of it upstairs, some of it downstairs. And what happened was it got to be that the cool part was to be downstairs because what, I mean, you got to realize if the game starts at seven, you get there so friggin' early at five o'clock, quarter to four, what, oh, are, yeah. what are we supposed to do? We could only gossip and talk so much. I'm glad I didn't know all the stuff that was going on. So what we did was we, we started Euchre games and that's when we played Euchre and you had to be in the end to play the Euchre game. And we talked just as much and gossiped and you wouldn't want to be the person that didn't get in those Euchre games. Cause basically if you didn't come to the game, we'd probably end up talking about you. So, uh, we, we, it was a lot of fun in the wives room. Mom and I, we really had a good time. So I will ask this question. Did the wives look at the girlfriends differently than other wives? Well, there was degrees of girlfriends, okay? There was like, if you were a casual date, there's no way you're going to come in the wives' room. But there was a couple of the girlfriends that were steady, steady girlfriends. And we all know the story about the one about your gold, uh, your uh, penalty killer that um, got broken up with and was slouching around. No, and I don't I, think we told that story. You should tell that, tell that story. That's a good one. Well, it, she was a regular girlfriend, and she told me, because we got to face it, I was 18, I was almost the same age as her, and she says, if he doesn't give me a ring for Christmas, I'm leaving, and I'm going back home. She was Canadian. Oh, geez, I said, all right. So needless to say... That, the, if you don't get a ring, you, you, you go home. You get engaged. Holy smokes. But, well, if, if he didn't say... Well, they were dating for a long They were time. dating, mm. and she basically was saying... If, I'm glad I didn't know all that stuff that was going on. <laughs> well, you and, know, I would have said, and and... Basically, so she's saying, if he doesn't ask me to marry marry him, then I'm leaving him. So first game back from Christmas, uh, she's gone. And I said, oh, don't, I guess she didn't get her ring and her diamond. So I remember a couple of weeks later, you're sitting having coffee with mom, and you're going on and on and on about your penalty killers. I don't know what's happening. They're scoring. And I said, well, I know what's the problem. I says, he's moping because he, you know, his girlfriend left <laughs> You go, you mean to tell me we're getting scored on because he's moping around about some, mm -mm." and I go, well, that's basically it. And I didn't say anything more. And within a month or two, she was back in the wives' room with a diamond ring. And he started to play better. And you didn't get scored on so (laughs) much. I'm glad I didn't know this stuff that was going on in the wives' room. And I'll never ask you again, ever, whatever happened in the wives' room. That's it. Well, Cindy, I think uh, we better not get any more trouble because... No, uh, no more uh, trouble about the wise rooms rooms and stuff. I didn't know all this stuff, and I don't (laughs) want to know anymore. Yeah, so uh, I know at the start we were going to talk about Jilly Jobert and the record that he still holds today in the National Hockey League, which is actually kind of mind-blowing. And uh, we'll talk about Jilly Jobert next, uh, next week.